In 1835, the French physicist and engineer Gaspard oh, Gustave hmm. de Coriolis published a paper entitled On the Equations of Relative Motion of a System of Bodies. Not exactly a title that rolls off the tongue, but in this paper he described the force that would eventually be named after him, the Coriolis effect. Très bien. Fun fact number one, Coriolis' name is one of the 72 names of famous engineers, scientists, and all-around brainiacs inscribed in the Eiffel Tower. Kind of a big deal. C'est magnifique! The Coriolis effect simply states that any moving body on or above the Earth's surface, such as an ocean or air current, or even an airplane, will tend to drift sideways from its course because of the Earth's rotation. For instance, in the Northern Hemisphere, the Earth's rotation causes the air moving southward to turn in a clockwise direction, while in the Southern Hemisphere, air moving northward will curve in a counterclockwise direction. Which brings us to fun fact number two. The Coriolis effect is the basis of an often repeated and thoroughly busted myth which purports that toilets in the southern hemisphere flush in a counterclockwise direction, while toilets in the northern hemisphere tend to flush clockwise. Spoiler alert, toilets have built-in water jets that control the direction of the swirl. It's not the Coriolis effect. Nice try though. Sacre bleu. The simplest way to demonstrate the Coriolis effect is if four people are on a rotating merry-go-round and one person throws a ball to the person directly across from them. The merry-go-round's rotation, combined with the ball's directional inertia, will cause the ball to seemingly curve to the side and go to the person next to them. So what does all this have to do with flow measurement? Well, a Coriolis flow meter works in the same principle. Here's how. A Coriolis flow meter uses the length of tubing whose inlet and outlet are on the same horizontal plane while the middle of the tube curves downward making a U shape. A magnetic exciter causes the tube to oscillate or swing back and forth constantly. When there is no flow, the tube oscillates uniformly. When liquid flows through the tube, a twisting motion develops as a result of the liquid's inertia causing the inlet and outlet side of the tube to oscillate out of phase from one another. Sensors detect the amount of phase shift in the oscillation between the inlet and outlet. The amount of phase shift is proportional to the amount of fluid or mass flow through the tube, giving us an accurate and repeatable flow reading. This is the same effect we saw with the merry-go-round example as the ball seemed to curve in mid-air due to the spinning of the merry-go-round. Only instead of a ball, our moving object is the flow of liquid which is now curved due to the oscillation of the tube. The same way the spinning merry-go-round caused the ball to curve. Get it? So there you have it. Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis was super smart. Coriolis flow meters are definitely a thing, and toilets flush the same way no matter where you are. Au revoir.